Okay, good morning, everybody. Neil's got a good talk about morality today, so let's start with a, uh, our Father. One of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be doing a talk on morality today. Does any one of you all know what morality is? What would you think morality means? Anyone? No? If anyone says we have good morals, what does that mean? We have good morals. We have a good character. Morality comes from a Latin word, which means ethics, E-T-H-I-C-S. You all ever heard the word ethics? Ethics, the, it's, it's knowing the difference between right and wrong, and it's knowing the difference between doing good and doing evil. Is it making sense? Yes? Yeah. Okay. So, as Christians, we believe who created us? God. 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 So, if God created us, who sets the rules? God. Who sets the rules? God. God sets the rules. So, God sets the rules, then who's to judge between whether we are keeping the rules or not keeping the rules? Jesus. Jesus is God, right? So. We come back to the same thing. Who who says uh, who who judges whether we are doing good or that doing bad? God. God. So who sets the crime, or not the crime, but who sets the punishment for the crime? Who would set the punishment for the crime? Like say, for example, if I go out and I murder somebody, and the cops come and catch me, they lock me up in prison. They take me where? To jail. To jail, and then after jail, what what happens to me? They take me to where? Court. They take me to court. So when, when I go to court, who's sitting on the bench? The judge. The judge and then who else? The, the jury, right? And then there's two lawyers. But in some cases we have a jury, in some cases only the judge, right? So the judge is going to decide whether I am, I am what? Guilty. Guilty or not guilty, right? Guilty or innocent, right? Okay. So judge, uh, so uh, so this is the this is the, the so where did the loss come from? The laws that we have for traffic violations or anything that comes, who who makes all these laws? Who makes it? It's it's the the Senate or uh, what would you say? It's the it's the government that sets the rules, right? So there are two sets of rules. One of the one of the sets of rules is like the the government sets rules like for traffic violation and stuff. These rules, which has considered concern, considered traffic violation or other stuff that wasn't uh, prevalent in the Old Testament times. Why? Because at that time we didn't have cars and we didn't have like traffic signals and stuff, right? So it would have been redundant. It wouldn't have been of any use to have rules like that. So as we go along in our uh, walk in life at this, in this present time, the government will keep making some kind of rules. But there are two sets of rules. One set of rules is, is the, the rules that the government asks us to follow, right? Like when, when there's a red light, you're supposed to come stop your car. You can't just run the red light because you might hit another car and kill somebody, right? So laws are made for what? Safe. For safe. safety and protection, right? That's why God has laws. So there's also some things considered natural law. Now an animal will kill another animal for what? Yeah. For food. Which is the only animal on this whole earth that kills for sport? Who do you, humans? We are the only animals that kill for sport. You never see a lion going and saying, you know what, let me go kill that other animal just because I want to see if I'm, I'm strong enough or, or smart enough to, to out with that animal. But a human, even though he doesn't need the food, he'll go and he'll shoot a deer just for fun. Right? That's, that's the cruelty of human nature. It's fine. So, so, so first, we have, we have established two or three things. Who is the judge? Who is the judge? God. Who set the rules? 
God. God set the rules, right? Who set the punishment? The judge. So who's the judge? God is the judge. So God is the judge and he's the one who set the rules. Okay? So God set the rules and God said that if you break the rules, what is going to happen? What happens if you if you said if you break God's rules? What is the punishment for sin? What is the punishment? What is the punishment for sin? What does the Bible teach us? What is the punishment for sin? God says if you sin, this is going to happen. So what's the punishment? When God made the rule in the garden in the garden of Eden and he told Adam and Eve, do not eat from this tree. You can eat from all the other trees, but from this one tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you cannot eat it. If you eat from this tree, what is going to happen to you? Yeah. You are going to die. Right? Now, we have to understand one more time. I've done this before, but I'm going to keep repeating this. What is the difference? When we think of death, what, what is death? What does that mean to us? You're so hmm? You're so what, is, what does that mean? Your life is over. Life is over. So when we are dead, are we just like a body just lying there? Yes. Anybody can poke us, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. yeah? But that's only our body, right? But what happens to the spirit that's inside of us? It goes up in the air. It goes up in the air. Where? Where does the spirit go? It goes either to heaven or to hell, right? So the, supposing it goes to heaven, the people in heaven, are they alive? Yes. They are alive. What about the people in hell? Are they alive? Yes. They are alive, right? As far as they are able to move and they are able to feel stuff, so they are alive, right? So how can we say the people in hell are alive and God says that being in hell is death? So what exactly is death? What is death? I need you to understand this. What is the meaning of death? What is death? What, is, what actually is death? When Jesus said, Jesus said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly, right? So Jesus came so that we may have life. And yet they say when we go to hell, we are dying. We are, we are dead. But yet, when we, when we think of the concept of death, it's not like the body dead with no feeling and in the grave. People in hell are also alive. They can feel everything. Because if they couldn't feel anything, there would be no punishment, right? Because when you're in hell, you burn in the fires of hell. Is it an actual fire? Or is it another kind of fire, like a spiritual fire, where you want something so bad, but you can never have it? See, you're always hurting because you want something so bad, but you can never have it. So what is that one thing that they want so bad, but they can never have? God, exactly. So death. Think of this now. Just remember, every time you think of death, that is not the physical death, right? So God made the rules. God is the judge. God made the rules. God said, if you sin, you're going to die. So we sin, right? Because all of us sin. We can sin because we just told a lie. We did something wrong. We are all guilty of. What are we guilty of? Sin. We are guilty of death. Because as far as the rule says, the rule says if you sin, you die. Okay? Think of this. Supposing you want to enter into a sporting event. And they've got a... Um, uh, what is it uh, called? Uh, something like, uh, you know what they call high jumps? You know what a high jump is? Hard jump. Huh? Hard jump. You know what a high jump is when you go to a sporting event and you see the high jumps? Okay. They have two poles yeah. and they put a stick, right? Oh. Across. Yeah. And they tell them that you have to come running over here and you have to jump over. Okay? So when you jump over, you either make it or what happens? You trip and fall. You trip and fall or you knock the, the stick down, right? So God has put all these rules in there. And God says, he, God put these rules in there. And the rules that he gave us in the Bible, okay? The rules in the Bible, when you start with the high jump, do they start from a low level and then go up to a higher level? Or do they start from the top and then go down? They start from lower to high. So the rules in the Bible don't start from the maximum and then go down. The rules in the Bible given to us is the barest minimum that we are supposed to do in order to jump over that stick to prove that we are able to do it so that we can go into heaven. But what does God teach us? God's, God teaches us that even the barest minimum that He asks of us, we are unable to do it. We are not able to. So, God is the judge, right? And if God says, Grace, come on, jump over this stick, can you do it? And Grace jumps over and she doesn't make it. The stick falls down. 
So as far as the judge is concerned, the judge has to just judge fairly. So what would the judge have to do to her? Would he qualify her to go up to the next level or would he tell her, you're out? No. He would disqualify her, right? If he was a fair judge, he would disqualify her, correct? So how could he be a good judge and a fair judge now when he's asking Grace to come and help him? And you know how God does that? How does God do it? You know how God does it? He sends the Holy Spirit. Now think of this. Here's the two poles and here's the stick. Right? And Grace has to come and she has to jump over it. But she can she can make it. She can reach that high. So what does God do? He sends the Holy Spirit. And well, when she's just ready to jump up, the Holy Spirit lifts her from below and helps her jump over the thing. So who, whose strength is she using now? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So God is the one who's helping us over. Right? You understand? Is it making sense? So this is why God, Jesus said, when he left, Jesus said, okay, Jesus paid the price. Okay, somebody had to pay the price. So he paid the price. Now take, if God had only made Adam and Eve, so God made Adam and Eve, and they sinned, right? They sinned. Did Adam and Eve die? Yes. So think of this now. Okay, God is the judge. God made the rules. God told them, if you sin, you're going to die. die. Adam and Eve sinned. Did they die? Yes. Slave clean, right? But then that would have been the end of the story. So how could God be kind enough to give us a second chance? What did God do to give us a second chance? He sent the Holy Spirit. He sent his son to die for us. Right? So now we have a physical death, right? Where we die. But now God's giving us another chance. How does He give us a second chance? How does He give us a second chance? He sent Jesus to, to teach us and, and the Holy Spirit to lift us up and to push us over the stick, right? And that's what we are studying and learning in church. That's what we study and learn when we read this book. Because this book is what's giving us a second chance. Okay, and that's what this whole mystery is all about. God is giving us a second chance. So God says, okay, I'm going to be a judge and I'm going to be just. You committed a crime, you die, right? If God wanted, God could have ended the story right here. Because Adam and Eve sinned, they died. And that would have been the end of the story. And we could have closed the book right there. But God says, no, our Bible starts from that place. It starts from this place, right? It starts from this place right here. And what God did is he's showing us the story of how we can start living again. And Jesus said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. So what's the life? The life is, it's not separation from God. How can we still go into God's presence? We still go into God's presence because Jesus himself, we couldn't do it ourselves. So Jesus himself came to pay for our sins. And he died so that we don't have to get punished. Do you understand? So it's everything is God's doing. So when the Holy Spirit comes, how many gifts does the Holy Spirit give us? How many gifts? How many gifts? The senses. Huh? The senses. No, how many gifts of the Holy Spirit? When the Holy Spirit comes, He gives us gifts, right? Like, supposing I come to your birthday party and I come and I give you gifts. I would give you one gift, but when the Holy Spirit comes, how many gifts does He give us? Nine. Seven. Very good. So the Holy Spirit comes with seven gifts. Those gifts produce some fruit in us, right? So if I plant a mango tree, and the tree grows up, and I give it fertilizer, give it water. When the tree grows up, the, fr the tree will produce fruit. What fruit does the tree will, what fruit will that tree produce? But it's a mango tree, so what will it produce? Mangoes. If it was an orange tree, it would produce what? Oranges. Oranges. So whatever the tree is, that's what it produces, right? But how many fruits does the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, how many fruits, how many fruits does it produce? 
How many? Four. Okay, somebody else? Somebody said four. That's not a right answer. Okay. But good. Seven? One, That's eight, good. Four, not five, still five, not seven, correct. Seven, eight, nine, ten. eight? Still not correct. How many? Oh, hundred. No. How many? How many? It's twelve fruits. Six. Twelve fruits in season. How many months of the year? Twelve. Twelve. Twelve Why? fruits in season. You go to the last book of the Bible that in Revelation. Is from the Bible too. Remember in the last book of, of the Bible, which is the book of Revelation? Yes. It talks about Okay, on, in chapter 22, let's go to chapter 22, it's page 1447. You want to go there real quick, page 1447? Okay, you want to read? No. You want to read? Okay. Go ahead, from there. We are at, we are in uh, in the book of Revelation chapter twenty two. Sparkling. And of the Lamb. Okay, that's it. So, you see what the Holy Spirit is showing us in the book of Revelations. Okay? Remember when we started? When we started with the book of the Bible, what did we start off with? We started off with what? Where was Adam and Eve? Where were they? That's correct. Go ahead. Say it louder. They were in a garden. Right? And the book of Revelation, where do you think it ends? Where do you think it would end? Where? If we started in a garden, where would it end? In a garden. And, and, the, and the Bible tells us that the angel showed him a river. Okay? And if you, look at the, if you look at the book of Genesis, it also starts with one river, right? The river coming out of Eden and flowing into four different rivers. So we come to a river and it says that on either side of the river was a tree of life. It was the same tree but multiplied over. And how many times a year was the tree giving fruit? Twelve. Twelve. See the twelve? The twelve fruits of the Holy Spirit? Right here. It's the same thing. Is it making sense or you are getting confused? It sense. It's making sense. Because the fruit... Okay, so... What is the, what is the fruit? Does the, the tree have to work to make the fruit? Yes. Do you think the tree goes... Oh, let me push that mango out. Well, let me push that orange out. Does that tree have to do that? No. No. How does it? How does the fruit come on the tree? It has to work like us. Hmm? Does it have to do anything? No. It just gets the sunlight, the grace of God. It gets water. It has soil. It's fat. And that's it. The tree. See, that's we, that, That's the way we are. When, when the Holy, when we allow, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to come into us. When the Holy Spirit comes into us, it's it's His strength. Yeah. That helps us to do better stuff. Yes. So the, the Holy Spirit, when we get the that's called grace. Okay. Grace gives us the strength to increase in what? In virtue. Virtue means to do good things. The Holy Spirit strengthens us to do good things, and it decreases. It decreases our vices. Means our our, our, our wanting to do bad things. Okay. So it, it increases. Our, our, our need to do good things and it decreases our need, our need to do bad things. Is it making sense? So, so God gives us life and He also gives us the strength to lead good lives. Okay, the reason why we are doing this class today is also because the topic of morality 
if you all have this book, and you see it's in the last, um, it's one of the last chapters that we are supposed to do, and it's a topic on morality, okay? So that's one of the reasons why we are doing this topic today. The second reason is because one of my friends asked me a question, why is God so cruel? Huh? Okay? He asked me this question, why is God so cruel? Why would God want to kill us? Why, 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 we, why, why is there sin in this world? Why is there suffering? Why, why does God let people die? Right? Why is God so angry all the time at us? Okay? And I started doing a lot of thinking about the question he asked me. Because when he asked me the question, at that time, I couldn't come up with a good enough answer with which to convince him. Right? So the key, the key is how we think of God and how we look at God. Okay, supposing, let's say, supposing we have Matthew and Anthony. Oh, 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 Come on. Supposing we have two, two people that have both committed a crime. Oh my goodness. Okay, supposing two, of two people have committed a crime. I'm, Think of this now. I'm murdered. Two people have committed a crime. They've, they've been taken to, to the jail, then they took, they took them before the judge. And then the judge has sentenced both of them to go and spend time in jail. I they have to go to jail to, to do their sentence, right? Okay, everybody with me so far? Yeah. So now, the judge comes to the, to, the, to the jail, okay? The judge comes to the jail to visit them. And guess what? Well, let's say it's not the judge. Let's say it's somebody else that comes to the, to the, to the uh, jail to visit them, okay? A hobo. And guess what he has in his pocket? Money. He has in his pocket a, key. A, a sheet of paper from the governor which says that each of them on a separate piece of paper they've been granted freedom. Huh? Okay? But they don't know it. The prisoners don't know it. Correct? So this guy comes and he asks the first prisoner, did you commit that crime? And the prisoner says, no, I'm, I'm innocent. You did. Then he goes and he asks the other prisoner, did you commit the crime? And the prisoner says, no, I'm innocent. Why, why do you think even after they've been sentenced that they are still protecting, they are still protesting the innocence? Why? What would their motive be? They've already been caught, they've been convicted, they're in jail, they're they are completing their sentence, but still both the prisoners are saying, we are innocent. What do you think would the motive be? Well, say one says that they're innocent, one, one accepts the fact that they are guilty. But what would the other prisoner's motive be for claiming his innocence? Both of them got caught, right? One of them, one of the motives why they're claiming innocence because they want the other person to feel that, hey, I didn't do anything wrong. Or if I did something wrong, I'm getting punished too hard for the crime that I, come, uh, that I was sentenced, the crime. The punishment is too severe, it's too hard. I shouldn't have to pay this much, okay? I shouldn't have to pay this much. So he's trying to just get out of jail. That's why he's protesting innocence. So he says, I didn't do anything wrong. The other person says, I'm guilty. So what's the difference between the two? See, both of them got caught. What is the difference? The one that said he was guilty, he was being truthful and honest. Yeah, he was being truthful and honest, but also there's a motive behind it. He's, he's actually sad. He's actually remorseful. He's actually repentant that he did something wrong and, he, and he cha his heart has changed. But the other person, his heart hasn't changed. What is, he's, he's also sad, but why is he, what is he uh, complaining about? He's complaining about his punishment, that the punishment is too hard. You see the difference between the two hearts? So then the, 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 the person who comes as a, uh, a visitor to the prison, right? And he's got, uh, there's two of them sitting in front of him, and he's got both of their pardons, one in his left pocket, one in his right. So he talks to the first one, right, and he asks him, this is the one who says that he was innocent, and he didn't do anything wrong, okay? And he asks this guy, he says, okay, so tell me, um, what happens if you get, if you, if I let, uh, say, he, say he committed murder, okay, and he's been sentenced for, to life in prison. He's never going to get out for his whole life. That's his punishment, right? And so this guy comes and he asks him, okay, so what happens if you get a pardon? What will you do? So he turns around and he says, 
man, if I get out of this prison, you know the first thing I'm going to do? I'm going to go look, at, look, out, look out for the judge who sentenced me and I'm going to kill him. Yeah. Then I'm going to go to, the, to the, uh, the, the witness that testified against me and I'm going to fight her and I'm going to kill her. Okay? So he goes to the other person and he asks him, what happens? This guy is also guilty of murder. Okay? And he asks him, if, I, if, if you get a pardon and you, and you are allowed to go free, what will you do with your life? And he says, you know what, I'm, I'm going to be so grateful to God that I'm set free and I'm going to go and do good things for everybody. And I'm going to try to help everybody. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, but everything good. But who, who do you think the guy as a visitor would come and give the pardon to? Um, the dude who, um, was being honest. Who was being honest. So you see how this second, this second thing comes into play now? Okay, so both were guilty, both were guilty, one asked for forgiveness, the other didn't. One said that they were guilty, the other claimed that they were innocent. Is it making sense? This is what this is, what this is all about. When we go to confession, what are we doing? We are guilty. What is our punishment? What are we deserving of? We are deserving of death. But what does God offer us? Instead of death, He offers us a pardon. It's a go free, go free, go free card. Any of you play Monopoly? Yes. Where it says, get out of jail? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's what God did when He gave Jesus to us. He gave us a get out of jail card. You understand? That's what it is all about. So, when we die, when we die, okay, so Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve sin, think of this, Adam and Eve sin, they die. Okay, when Adam and Eve sin and they die, what happened to their body? What happened to the body? Body and soul separated, right? So the body is just a piece of flesh that doesn't feel anything anymore, buried into the dirt. The soul would have gone where? Separate from God. Because they had sinned, right? Separate from God. So they would have been separated from God for all of eternity. That would have been eternal death. But God loved us so much that He was willing to give us a second chance. And that's why He put this whole plan into place, this plan of redemption, the plan of salvation, where he sent Jesus as our, as our what? Get out of jail? Free card. Free card. Is it making sense to you all guys? Yes? Yes? Now, one of, one of, well, one, one, uh, I was telling you about my friend asking this question. So look, we can look at God in two ways. We look at God as a prisoner, and we look at God and we say, oh, we did everything right. And I think you're a cruel person to judge me the way you judge me. Or you can look at God and say, I'm, I'm a sinner. I'm grateful for your forgiveness. You see, it's how we look at God. How did Adam and Eve look at God? How did they judge God after they sinned? Who, who committed the mistake? Was it God who committed the mistake or was it Adam and Eve? It was Adam and Eve, right? So. Rightfully, God has a right to come in there and judge them and put them to death. But did God put them to death? What did He do? He gave them what? A second chance. How did He do that? He sent Jesus. No, now this is not, Jesus hasn't come for another 4,000 years. Okay? So how did He, how did he let Adam and Eve? Them from the okay, so he yeah. kicked them out of the garden. And he sent them down to earth. And he sent them down to earth. But we already honored. We, they were already honored. But there was one thing that God did. What did God do? If, if, if God had to keep his, his judgment and, and his sentence at that time, the sword should have come on Adam and Eve's neck and death. Yeah, at that instant. Yeah, yeah. But God didn't kill them. Even though he kicked them out of the garden, he didn't kill them. What did he do? What did Adam and Eve do? Let's, ask, let's answer the question first. What did Adam and Eve do when they sinned? What did they do? They hid. They ran and they hid. Correct? What else did they do? They what? They Well, they did. But before they, before they even got to... to before they, they started being judged by God, what did they do before that? They ran. And they hid. They hid. They did one more thing. They ran. They hid. What else? What is the third thing they did? They made what? They made clothes for themselves. From what? From fig leaves. You see how weak fig leaves are? 
Fig leaves don't last very long. They're going to break and tear, and then again, they're going to be naked, right? So what did God do? He gave them animal skin. So how did God get the animal skin? Did the, did, did the animal... He sacrificed. He sacrificed. So some, one, one life for... For another, you understand? That's how the whole plan of salvation works. It's some one one life given up in exchange for another. another. But you see, man and animal are on what? They are on two different levels. Okay? So an animal can only atone for our sins for a certain amount of time. And according to the Old Testament, when the Jews killed the lamb, for how long were they free from sin? For only one, one what? Okay. One year. One year. But when a man died for a man, okay, so for how long are we free from sin now? Forever. Forever. That's only if we accept the gift. Do you understand? Do you understand now why God gives us the pardon? Why does God give us the pardon? Because when God pardons us, God tells us that He's going to give us this pardon but we have to go out and we have to not go and kill somebody else, right? If, we are, if God's going to let us out and we're going to go and keep repeating the same sin, so then what, what difference is it, right? Does it make sense? So when God forgives us, God tells us, we, I'm forgiving you, but go out into the world and do not sin anymore, okay? Do not, do not commit to the same crime. Yes or no? Making sense? So it's, a, it's again, it's how we see God. So, so Adam and Eve committed sin. God came there. Instead of killing them, God killed the animal. So the animal paid for their sin. But it was only a temporary covering, right? God took the skin from the lamb and he, he made uh, clothes for them and he gave them those clothes. So those clothes were stronger than the fig leaves. If they came across a thorny bush and they're walking by, the soft wool is going to protect them. If it became winter and it was very cold, the wood would keep them warm. Yes? But the main thing was that when he killed the lamb, what, what happened? When he killed the lamb? The Something had to come out, right? When he cut the lamb's throat, what happened? Blood had to come out. Blood, blood came out. See, think of it like this. Supposing somebody has cancer, okay? And they have cancer of the blood. You know how they can keep that person alive with cancer of the blood? What do they have to keep doing? You know the cancer, when you have cancer of the blood, the cancer starts spreading in the blood. It starts from a little place and then, but eventually, like in about three months or six months, what happens? All of the blood in the whole body gets, cancer. what? Gets contaminated, right? Now, if all of the blood in the whole body is contaminated, what is the only way we have to keep that person alive? What do we do? Replace the blood. We replace the blood. Very good answer, Matthew. We replace the blood. So you know what the doctor does? He puts, he, he gives that person a transfusion. Okay? He gives them a transfusion. So they put a big bottle of blood here. Okay? And from here, they are draining the blood. And from here, fresh blood is coming in. Okay? So think of this. They've got this, this uh, patient lying on a bed. And there's a big bottle. And the bottle is coming to an uh, intravenous. And it's pumping fresh clean blood in him. Right? And all the dirty blood that's in his body, they're draining it out from here. Making sense? When all of the blood has been replaced, okay, so all the dirty blood is gone, now he has all clean blood in him, and they seal up both of this and put a bandage to, to stop the bleeding. Now that guy walks around, but guess what happens? There's still cancer in him, right? And so what starts happening again? What starts happening again? The new blood starts getting? Contaminated. contaminated again. So after six months, what does he have to do again? Replace the blood. He has to replace the blood. Do you understand? This is what was happening with the sacrifice of the lamb. The lamb was covering it for one year, but after one year, they had to keep going back and sacrificing the lamb. Okay? Again. But now, supposing you find one man, you find one man that has blood that is completely clean, and not only is it completely clean, there's some antibodies in that antibodies in that blood that no germ or no disease can contaminate. No germ, no disease can contaminate. That person's blood, if you put any germ in there, that blood kills the germs. And that person is Jesus. 
So now, when we become Christian and we accept Jesus and we accept God, this is what is happening. Okay? So all, all, the, all of our, blood, our dirty blood is going out and Jesus is transfusing his blood into us. And eventually, as we become more and more like God, all of his blood comes into us and now we no longer have our blood. Whose blood do we have now? God. God. And can the cancer come back? No. So think of cancer as sin. So no more sin. Do you understand? Is it making sense? Are you all seeing the picture? Yes? Mr. Ray? Is it making sense? Yeah. Okay. So, this is, this, is, this is the difference between sin and grace and mercy, okay? When we look at sin, and if we, if we act like, we come in upright before God and we say, you know what, I sin, so what? God is going to punish us. Then is He rightful in sending us to hell? And when God sends us to hell, what are we talking about? It's not like hell is, of course hell is a bad place, but when, when God punishes us, God says, okay, if you don't want me, go away, right? God is not sending us away. Who chooses to go away? Us. We choose to go away. So when God says, okay, if you don't want me, I'm not going to force you. Go away. And so we go far away, away from God. And we are so far separated from Him that we can't be with God anymore. Then guess what happens? Like the prodigal son, we are in hell now. No way to come back. We are in hell. And so now there's no food to eat. There's no clothes to keep us warm. And we are suffering. And nobody there to save us. Because when the chance was given to us to be saved,